Hello everyone, and welcome to another Gates tutorial video. My name is Michael, I'm an application engineer here at the Gates Corporation. In today's video, we're going to be covering our latest and greatest software, Design Power. So what is Design Power? Well, Design Power is an all-encompassing software platform that's going to house all of our independent belt drive design software, such as Design IQ and Design Flex, all under one roof. The good news is, is we've actually incorporated a lot of the same functionality as well as the user interface of Design IQ into Design Power. So the overall software will feel very similar. But let's just jump right in. Okay, we're gonna jump into a new design here. So click New Design here. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. So just choose your desired location. Next, it's gonna ask you, uh, what do you wanna call it? And so I'm just gonna leave it as Design 1 for now. Next, you need to choose what design platform you want to use. So we're going to be covering Design IQ in this video, so click that guy. Next is Belt Type Selector. So this is where you decide whether or not you want to choose a V-belt or a synchronous belt. So select that guy. Next, you can choose to fill in these fields. Uh, these fields will populate on the final report. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to skip this for now. And we're going to be jumping into the same drive we designed in our first Design IQ video, which actually was a fan drive. It has a center distance of 13 inches fixed. The, the motor horsepower and RPM are 30 horsepower and 1750. It's a 2 to 1 speed down ratio. And we're looking for a slotted idler 10 hours a day, 5 days a week. So we're going to run into, we're going to do a synchronous drive here. We are going to choose the Polychain GT Carbon, and we're going to choose the 8mm pitch. So once you, once you check that box, you click Apply up here, and then a little geometry box down here will appear. And then click that guy. So this is where things are going to start looking familiar. So if you remember, uh, Design IQ takes place in the XY plane. You can see down here it puts the first pulley at 0, 0, so this is your origin. Uh, we're going to cover these buttons here on the left-hand side. So this first green one is, is Add Pulley. So it does exactly that. You can see I can place it wherever. Uh, next is Flip Pulley. We'll cover that here in a second. That's Delete Pulley. You can see we can get rid of it just like that. Uh, undo, Redo, pretty self-explanatory. Zoom in and zoom out. These are very useful, especially if your designs become very complex. Uh, one of my personal favorites is Zoom to Fit. I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Uh, we got Pan here. This is allows you to slide the, uh, the entire drive back and forth. And these last three have to do with idlers. So we have a pivoted idler, slotted idler, and this removes the, stat, the idler status from a pulley. Um, these four up here uh, have to do with rotation, uh, so counterclockwise and clockwise. And then uh, this is going to be the belt length finder and then the edit idler button, which we will cover in more depth in a later video. But right now, let's just, uh, let's just jump right in. So I, as you can tell down here in the XY coordinate, we are in millimeters. I am uh, going to switch that to inches here. And to do that, we go up here to tools. We're going to go down to unit schemes. And we are going to change that to US customary. So you can change it for just the current drive or your default, I'm going to change it for default because I typically work in inches. Click OK. So and you can see everything just recalculated to uh, inches. OK, and back to our fan drive. We had a 13-inch center distance. So I'm going to add a pulley here in the top right, top left, excuse me. I'm just going to place it. We're going to plug in our XY coordinates for our pulleys here. So first I'm going to plug in 0, 0 to put our first pulley at the origin. I'm going to put uh, 13 here, excuse me, 13 inches. And then I'm going to move them into the same plane, so I'm going to put 0 there as well. Next we need an idler. So in order to do that we need to place an idler. I'm going to just place it right in between the two sprockets here. And you can see, notice we have an inside idler. Uh, I believe in this case we want a backside idler. So in order to do that, we need to make sure pulley number three is selected. You can see that by the, the green highlight here. And you're going to go over to this flip pulley button in the top left. And you can see it just moves the belt on the other side of, this, of the pulley. Now, we need a two to one speed down. So number one is going to be our motor, which I'm actually going to, you can label them down here in the, uh, the XY table. 
So I'm going to put motor here. Number two is going to be our fan. And number three is actually going to be our idler. So we are going to choose, I'm going to choose a 45 tooth sprocket here for the motor. We're going to change the fan to a 90. And we are going to leave our backside idler to a three inch OD just to keep things nice and compact. You can see we're a little close to this driven uh, sprocket here. So I'm just going to slide this over uh, our idler into uh, in, in between the two sprockets a little bit more. Okay, now uh, this is no, this does not have the idler denotion. So in order to do that, we're going to go over here to slotted idler. We're going to click that and notice how it give, gave us the adjustment range for a slotted idler. This is just a default range. Um, obviously, if you have a lot less, you can, what you can do is you can actually right click on this idler and go to tensioner properties here. And you can plug in the exact length, the start point and the end point for your specific adjustment range. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as the default just for simplicity. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the belt length finder, this little wrench. And this is going to bring up all of our stock belt lengths. Everything in red here is out of the range of the adjustment of this, this adjustment range we provided, the default range. Uh, what's in yellow is basically telling you this belt will work technically within the adjustment range. However, it may be relatively difficult to install. So when in doubt, always go with this, the solution that's in white. I'm going to double click that here. You'll notice that the idler snapped to the correct position for that belt length. So what I'm going to do is click OK. Everything looks good to me. And we're going to move on to the next section, which is the load entry tab. It's down here in the bottom right. Okay, so in this tab, this is where you input the drive conditions uh, for your specific belt drive. In this case, what we're going to do, uh, we have one condition. It's going to be at working at that 100% of the time. It's 30 horsepower at 1750 RPM. So we're going to go to condition one here. We have our motor fan and idler. Got to make sure also that the orientation uh, of rotation is going to be correct. In this case, it is. We want the slack side of the belt to be uh, on the side of the belt with the idler, and that is the case. Uh, you can change that here by the simple drop down. Um, the RPM of our motor, we have 1750. Uh, the power units, we got to make sure we're inputting power. We're hitting inputting horsepower. You can also input torque as well, but in this case, we're going to we're going to put in uh, 30 horsepower. However, notice how this is grayed out here. Let me let me click off of it. This horsepower for the motor is actually grayed out. So, and that's because the way the software works is it works on load draw, not input horsepower. So, for example, if you had a large serpentine drive, think of the serpentine belt in your car where you have the water pump consuming power, your compressor consuming power, so on and so forth. Each of those are drawing a certain amount of horsepower from the engine. Well, in this case, all of the power from the motor is going into our fan. So, what we can do is we can go over to our fan horsepower here and plug in 30 horsepower and hit enter. Uh, next, we, our units look good. We want to make sure, so this DR column stands for driver, so which pulley is driving. And it looks like it actually auto-calculated uh, all the tension for us there. Uh, so next, our units look good. This column right here is actually going to be, uh, this DR stands for driver, so which pulley is the driver in our case, which is the motor, so that's okay. We'll leave that checkbox there. Uh, this, this one right here is the SF column denoted by the SF column, is for, stands for service factor. It's similar to a safety factor, but basically adds an additional cushion onto the drive itself. Uh, what we recommend, uh, we, we publish, uh, based on usage, the type of application, what, our, what we would typically recommend for a service factor. In this case, it's, it's a simple fan drive, so I'm going to go with 1.6. You can plug 1.6 into any of these fields, and it should auto-populate 1.6 throughout, and then as well as recalculate here up in the right-hand corner. I won't go into too much detail here. We'll, we'll, we will cover this in a separate video, but basically it gives you all your tensioning information for force deflection for a new and a used belt. Uh, it also gives you belt width calculations here. Uh, so you can see we're calculating a 0.83 inch belt, which I believe comes out to 
roughly 21 millimeters, which is a standard width in the polychain, so likely that would be the belt width we would select, as well as it provides a static tension value up here as well. The last thing is the driver port, and so you can generate a driver port by clicking this output button here in the bottom right. I'm not going to do that here in this video. The, the driver port itself uh, deserves its own video. It's got a ton of great information that will really help you narrow down your selection of, of belt drive components. But if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 303-744-5800 or email us at ptpasupport at gates.com. Thank you for watching.